in Hornet. <laughs> the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, George Haven's Secret. The Green Hornet strikes again. Judge Burnley sat in the study of his home, reading intently. Suddenly, his attention was drawn by the click of the latch on one of the long French windows. He looked up, startled, and found himself staring into the eyes of a sinister figure standing before him. The Green Hornet. Why do you come here? What do you want? It's after midnight. State your business and get out before I... Put down that gun. If you think you can bluff me, you're mistaken, so... By thunder, I'll have you hunted down and captured if it's the last thing I... Say something. Why have you come... Gunnigan, city editor of the Daily Sentinel, was talking over the dictaphone to Lenore Case, secretary to Britt Reed. A time to expect Reed to come in, Miss Case. Well, I have any idea, Gunnigan. Sometimes Mr. Reed doesn't come in until noon. Noon? Holy mackerel, what's he think we're putting out down here? A circus handbill instead of a daily paper? I never know what Mr. Reed thinks. You'll have to ask him that. Good morning, Gunnigan. Complaining about something? Have you finished, Mr. Gunnigan? Yeah. Yeah, just forget the whole thing. I was just uh, asking Miss Case about you, Chief. Asking or telling, Gunnigan? <laughs> Hi, Reed. Good morning, Axford. Axford, I thought I told you to get out of here. Oh, I started, out. but I heard that second-handed ball and out you were given to Reed, so I thought I'd stick around and... You get outside and hear a bit of good news instead of standing around in here listening Skip to what's it, going... Gunnigan. The way you were shouting, everybody in the city room could hear you. Now, listen, Chief, I was just about... To... Okay, okay, forget it. Well, now that I'm here, what do you want to see me about? It's about that murder. Judge Burnley, you know... Judge Burnley? No, I didn't know. I went to bed early and haven't heard any of the news. Holy crow, Reed. We got a scoop on it. And already got out an extra. That's right, Chief. Sure. Burnley was murdered sometime after midnight by the Green Hornet. By the Green Hornet? Yeah, the Hornet was the killer, all right. Well, how, uh, how do they know that? Easy. The brazen spalpeen left a Hornet seal at the scene of the crime, Reed. That he did. I see. The authorities are really out to get the Hornet this time, Chief. I gotta have a scorching editorial for the next edition. So you better get right on it. Yes, uh, yes, of course, Gunnigan. Um how was Burnley killed, actually? He was shot down right in his own study read. Uh, who called the police? Uh, Mrs. Burnley. She and the butler were waked up by the shots and went into the study together. Then she called the cops. I went along with Sergeant Burke and the homicide squad, and the first thing we found was the harness seal stuck on the judge's desk. The harness sure stuck his neck out that time, Chief. The cops won't let up this time. This is murder. I agree with you, Gunnigan. The killer did stick his neck out a long way. And something tells me the hunt will go on until he's caught. That's the way I feel about it. Good, and believe me, it'll be a headline news when he is caught, too. Yes, Gunnigan, I'm sure it will. I'll be more pleased than you think when we can headline the news that Judge Burnley's murder has really been solved. That afternoon, Miss Case entered Brick Reed's office. I have all the data you wanted on those two city officials, John Webb and George Haven, Mr. Reed. Oh, yes. I want to go through it again, Miss Case. 
just put it all on my desk. Yes, sir. I suppose the investigation in which Webb and Haven were involved will be dropped, or at least delayed, since Judge Burnley's been murdered. Delayed, perhaps, but certainly not dropped in this case. But night before last, Webb committed suicide, and as I understand it, the judge was sort of a one-man grand jury investigating the graft charges against the two officials. I know. And Haven is such an important figure, I doubt that anyone outside of Judge Burnley well, would take the job of investigating him. Oh, I don't know about that. The Sentinel has been pushing for that investigation for weeks. And we won't stop now. In that case, the city will be forced to put somebody else on the case. Well, that's what we're hoping. Well, I guess I'll take these papers along home with me and look them over tonight. Oh, is there anything else you want me to do before you leave? No, I might as well call it a day, Miss Case. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, Miss Case. Britt Reed left his office and went to his apartment where Cato, his faithful Filipino valet, and the only person knowing his identity as the Green Hornet, was waiting. Britt looked through the data on the two city officials, then called Cato into the den for a discussion. Cato, I suppose you read the headlines about Judge Burnley's murder. Oh, yes, Mr. Britt. It'd say Green Hornet killed Judge. I wonder why you not mention it when you first arrived tonight. I wanted to check through these papers first, Cato. Fresh in my mind are some facts concerning the past lives of Webb and Haven. Webb? Well, he's the same man who committed suicide night before last? Yes. According to the papers. Well, you think it not suicide, perhaps? Cato, I was waiting for further developments before I talked it over with you. But matters took a turn I didn't expect. Why well, not understand, Mr. Britt? You will when you hear what I'm going to tell you. The day before yesterday, I was in my office giving dictation to Miss Case on the phone. Well, I'll take it, Miss Case. Hello? Is this Mr. Britt Reed? Yes, this is Britt Reed speaking. Well, this is John Webb, Mr. Reed. John Webb? Oh, yes. I know you must be surprised to have me call you, but... Well, I decided it was the best thing to do. Well, I guess I don't quite get the point, Mr. Webb. Why would you call me? Your paper, the Daily Sentinel, has been pressing for an investigation against myself and George Haven. The investigation, as you well know, is underway. I... Well? well? Mr. Reed, believe me, I welcome that investigation. It'll clear my conscience regardless of the outcome. I was advised to do the things I've done in office, and though I can be blamed for being so gullible, I'm glad to say I'm strong enough to take the consequences. I see. But uh, that still doesn't explain why you phoned me, Mr. Webb. I've called you because I know that you, through your paper, fight for what's right. I know that you give the news fairly and without prejudice. So I want you to have my story. You mean you want to give Mr. me a story? a favor to me, I'd like you to come out to my place on Carlton Street. I feel that if you come in person and alone, you can give me some frank advice in exchange for the full story of what's taken place since I've held office. I intend to give you facts and names to print in the center. I know then that the public will get a true, unbiased story. After talking to you, I... I intend to go straight to Judge Burton. Will you come? Of course. Oh, uh, what time, Mr. Webb? Tonight at 8. I'll be home alone. Just come right in. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I heard you mention the name Webb. Is he the same... That was John Webb in this case. One of the men who were being investigated. Tonight he's going to give me a detailed story. When you go to see Mr. Webb, did he act like he might later take his own life, Mr. Britt? Cato, I went to Webb's home at 8. I went in as he directed. He was sitting at a desk in the study. He was already dead. Dead? Then you one who phoned police, maybe? No. He had a bullet wound in his head, held a gun in his hand, and there was a suicide note before him on the desk. Well, that Webb's idea of giving you a story for a sentinel, perhaps. Cato, things didn't jibe in my mind. I felt that Webb really wanted to talk to me. I decided he'd been murdered. And then the killer fixed things so it would seem like suicide. In fact, I felt so sure I was right that I wanted the police to see that it was murder. But they find Webb with Now, wait a minute. I had a small box of hornet seals in the secret pocket of my coat. I made a quick decision. Took the gun and the note, left a hornet seal in front of him on the desk, and hurried out to my car. Well, you want police to think hornet killed Webb? Only until I had a chance to hunt down the real killer. He'd know his plan hadn't worked, and he'd be sure to tip his hand. What happened next, Mr. Britt? Well, it'd been necessary to park my car quite a distance down the block from Webb's place. I had the small coupe. I got in. It was cold, and the motor wouldn't start right away. But finally, I got it started. 
And as I drove toward Webb's home up the street, I saw someone run out of Webb's, hop into a waiting car, and leave in a hurry. Did you try to follow? No, it would have been useless. I stopped. Went back into Webb's home. And what do you think I found? What? Someone had placed another gun in Webb's hand, left another suicide note, and had taken the hornet seal I'd left. The man who killed Webb, plenty smart, and most dangerous, Mr. Brick. You're telling me. I barely entered that study for a second time when I heard the police sirens. So I had to get out in double quick time. Consequently, they pronounced Webb a suicide, as the killer had intended. Well, Mr. Britt. Yes? Killer of Judge Burnley must be the same one who killed Webb and take Hornet Seal. Exactly. He must have posed as the Hornet and sneaked in on the judge, just in case he didn't die instantly. Then he left that authentic Hornet Seal after the killing. Killer must have found out Webb intended to tell everything. Yes. I don't know how he did find out. But he knew if Webb were found as a suicide, it would seem as though he were the guilty one. And the investigation would be dropped. Why he killed Judge Burnley then? Because Burnley gave out a statement after Webb's death that the investigation would continue. Cato, only two men were involved in the investigation. Will you suspect Haven of being killer, maybe? It's hard to say. It would be only a guess, and it, it would be hard to prove, but... Oh, Axford coming in. We're in the den, Axford. Sitting there like you didn't have a care in the world. That's the life. <laughs> Where do you sit on most of your afternoons, Axford? Who, me? I'll have you know, Reed, I don't waste my time sitting around at all. Why, yesterday afternoon, for instance, I went in to ask Casey where you were. She said you went out and that you were going to see John Webb later for an interview. Well? Well, did I sit down and twiddle me thumbs? Not on your life. I went over to Haven's office, that I did. To Haven's office? Well, what for? Well, I thought if you got an interview from Webb and I got one from Haven, we could print them side by side. <laughs> but both of us got stung, Reed. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, you probably got to Webb's while the cops were there, and with him already dead, you didn't get that interview. And when Haven's secretary told him I wanted to see him because Webb was going to talk to you, he told her to tell me to get out. So I got. And no interview either. You told Haven Webb was going to see me? Sure. But it didn't do any good. Well... I'm going to grab a bite and go on down to cop's headquarters. Well, Mr. Britt, if Haven knew... Yes, Cato. Haven knew Webb was going to talk. Then Haven must be killer. Yes, but we'll have to get proof. Well, what's more, there's something else, Cato. Something even more serious at the moment. What that? Haven knew Webb was going to talk to me that night. If he were watching, he must know that I left that hornet seal. He must realize that Britt Reed is the green hornet. When Brick Reed learned that Haven definitely knew John Webb had planned to talk to him, Brick realized that Haven was smart enough to connect him with the Green Hornet. After Axford left the apartment, Brick and Cato spoke briefly. It's not good to wait. Must do something before Haven make move that expose identity of Hornet. You're right, Cato. It's too risky to wait. What you do, Mr. Brick? Make the first move against George Haven. Let's go. <laughs> Meanwhile, George Haven paced the rug in the luxurious office he had set up in his home. Haven was a large man, aggressive and fearless. His deep-set eyes, prominent jaw, and deep husky voice never failed to hold the attention of Ken Fabian, his confidential secretary, who sat listening to Haven's fast-flowing words. Now, they thought they had me back to the wall, did they? Now, we'll have to ask you about that, Fabian. I'm sure you will, Mr. Haven. Go on. Maybe you, you mentioned a while ago that I took a great risk when I used the Green Hornet disguise on a uh, certain occasion. Oh, yes, sir. I've heard that the real Green Hornet relentlessly hunts down those who use his disguise to cover up uh, misdeeds. <laughs> <laughs> so you think I might be in danger from the Hornet, if he didn't? Well, sir, I have thought that he might Suppose try... Suppose I told you that the Green Hornet has much more to fear from me than I have from him. In what way, Mr. Haven? Because I know the true identity of the Green Hornet. You you know who the Hornet really is? Exactly. Well, who is it, Mr. Haven? Is he anyone I know? Curious, sir. <laughs> well, your curiosity will have to go unsatisfied for a while, Fabian. I'm keeping the information to myself. Yes, sir. But why don't you tell the police? Then you have nothing to fear from the Hornet. And besides, there's a big reward for his capture. $25,000. Fabian, I know who he is, but right now I can't prove it. Furthermore, if I told how I found out who he is, I'd involve myself in a uh, certain crime. 
Well, aren't you going to use that knowledge at all, sir? Well, it will be to my advantage. Fabian, you're going to help me lay a trap for the man I know to be the Green Hornet. Oh, but, but Mr. Haven, I'm sure there's nothing I could do to help. And, well, the Green Hornet is dangerous, sir. I don't Fabian, think... Fabian, you're supposed to be working for me. When I tell you you're going to do something, you're going to do what you understand. Yes. Yes, sir. What is it you want me to do? First, you'll phone the Continental Press. Tell them I've been threatened by the Hornet. They'll put the news on the wires. Within ten minutes, I'll be on the radio station. Mr. Then you'll phone the police. Have them come out here. Meet them at the door and take them upstairs to your rooms in the east wing of this house. From your windows, you can look right down into that window there in front of which I have my desk. But don't you want them to surround the house and cater... That's what I don't want them to do. The Hornet will hear the broadcast. He'll try to get to me, knowing it's some sort of a trick... You really think he'll come here? Yes, and that's exactly what I plan on. He may come as the Hornet, or he may find an excuse to come without his disguise. I'll get the drop on him, wave my arm as a signal. Then you can bring the police to this office. But if he doesn't come in disguise... I happen to know he carries the Hornet seals with him when he's not in disguise. I'll accuse him. The police can search him. They'll find proof enough. <laughs> I'll get busy on the phone. The Hornet may be smart, but he's not smart enough for George Haven. What you plan to do when you meet Haven, Mr. Britt? I still have the printed suicide note I took from Webb's desk. I hope to force Haven to print something. That would be for police comparison. And then to get him to disclose the whereabouts of the weapon he used to kill Judge Burnley. After that, I'll leave the evidence, put him out with a gas gun, and leave him for the police. But if he tell police he think you Green Hornet... If he's proven to be the killer, they wouldn't believe him. Especially since he has no proof. I'll have to take that chance even though I... Listen. Calling car 32. Calling car 32. Proceed to residence of George Haven, Linden, and Pine Streets. Meet car from headquarters there. Watch for Green Hornet. Police go to Havens. Wait. Car from headquarters now proceeding to Linden and Pine. Keep lookout for Green Hornet. That is all. Well, how Haven know we go there? We have no way of knowing, of course. It's a trick, Kato. He knows the Hornet would be tuned in to hear any broadcast. Well, maybe he intend to tell police who he think is Green Hornet. Maybe. We'll go there anyway and be ready for a trap. Step on it. short time later, parked in the shadows nearby, Rick Reed and Cato sat in the back Black Beauty and watched as the police went into Haven's home. Then, moving silently, the sinister figure of the Green Hornet and his helper soon reached the long French windows of Haven's study. With cautious movements, Rick turned the handle slowly. It's unlocked. He's making everything easy for me. Wait here. Good evening, Haven. Uh, the Green Hornet. I was expecting you to pay me a visit tonight. Really? Pardon me for not rising. In this case, I couldn't be expected to show that courtesy. Courtesy isn't to be expected of a killer, Haven. <laughs> That's a strong word for a man like you to use, Hornet. Maybe. But, uh... I happen to know you did kill Webb and also Judge Burnley. Even if you had such knowledge, you couldn't use it... Without disclosing your identity. What makes you think that? Only one man would be in a position to know whether Webb really committed suicide or was murdered. Uh, Britt Reed of the Sentinel had an engagement with Webb at 8 o'clock. Well? Let's stop beating around the bush on it. You're accusing me of murder, but you can't prove it. I accuse you of being Britt Reed, but so far I can't prove that. So you think I'm Britt Reed, eh? I'm smart enough to know you are. Uh, assuming you might be right, what do you intend to do about it? Get you out of my hair once and for all. As Britt Reed, you've done me a lot of harm through your paper. As a green hearted, you come in handy so far. But it's time to get both Reed and the Hornet out of the way. Well? You've walked into a trap, Hornet. The window just behind me faces the east wing of this house. There's from other windows in that wing, the police are watching. 
They see me sitting here. So that's it. Yes. <laughs> I uh, have a gun here in my hand. When I wave my arm, they'll rush down here. In case you get away, uh, which you won't, I printed a note in that envelope there telling the police you are Brett Reed. I'll send that anonymously through the mail. And with their suspicions aroused, they'll hound you till they get proof. If they don't get you now. Wait a minute, Haven. Suppose I tell you I came here to make a deal. What kind of a deal? All the evidence against you and Webb was in Judge Barnley's files, right? Yes, but I... The Green Hornet has ways of getting things. Suppose I tell you further that the papers here in my pocket might be that evidence. Let me see those papers. If I come there by the desk, the police will see me. Come here and look at them. If you don't believe I have that evidence... Without out of the way, they'll have to drop the key. Hold on. Whose papers are... Blank sucker! Give me that gun! Let go! There. Now I've got your gun. And it must be the same one with which you killed Burnley. I will take that note you printed. No, wait. What are you going to do? If the police get these, they can prove by ballistics that you shot Burnley. And the printing on this note will match with the suicide note you left with Webb. I can gas you and leave these bits of evidence here. The gun has your initials and fingerprints on it. But you wouldn't dare leave that note saying that Britt Reed's the haunted. They wouldn't believe a killer, and Britt Reed could explain. But, uh... On second thought, I won't have to leave it. I have the first suicide note you left with Webb. I'll leave that. Now I'll give you a bit of gas. No, I won't let you. I'd be disgraced. I... What are you doing? Wait! Wait! I beat you on it. I, I had a deadly poison tablet for an emergency. You, you can't hurt me now. I, uh, what happened? What did he do? He's committed suicide, Cato. I'll leave the suicide note in the gun. Also a note saying Haven killed Burnley. Then they can get the proof from the gun. I'll sit at his desk and fix these things. Now there. Now I'll wave my arm. Why do you do that? The police are watching from windows across the way. That was to be the signal. Let's get away from here. Quick. Golly, Reed. It was sure lucky you came back here tonight. You got in on the big news. Expert got me to drive him over here. Believe me, Mr. Reed, it is big news. Okay, it's big news. So what? Well, at least it clears up the Burnley murder case. That he does, Reed. Imagine, there we are, waiting for Haven's signal. All of a sudden, we see him get up and leave his desk. Then a figure that looked like the Hornet sat down at the desk and gave the signal. Was Sarge upset? Upset, you say? Imagine how we felt when we found Haven lying there, dead from poison, and a suicide note beside him. Sure, and another note saying Haven was the killer of Burnley. The gun we found there proved to be the same one Bernie was shot with. And it was Haven's gun. And it wasn't just a trick of the Hornets? Not on your life. When we found out Haven was the killer, we grilled his secretary, that guy Fabian. He squealed that Haven also murdered Webb and made it look like suicide. We booked him as an accessory. Reed, the amazing thing is, Fabian said Haven knew the identity of the Green Hornet. Really? Too bad he died before he could tell who he thought it was. Yes, isn't it? If I'd been the Hornet and thought Haven knew my identity... I'd have been very much worried. Ah, listen to him. Reed, even if you wasn't the Hornet, and you thought somebody was going to accuse you of being him, you'd go to pieces, that you would. Mr. Reed, if anyone accused you, I'd resign my job. Oh, I guess you're safe in your job for a while yet, Sergeant Burke. <laughs> for a while yet, he says. <laughs> Imagine Reed being the Green Hornet. <laughs> Ain't that a joke? <laughs> what a sense of humor that guy has, eh, Sarge? <laughs> Read your slavery. <laughs> 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 